Wrongful convictions. That's the topic here in our studios from Inside Out. guys thank you guys so much again for tuning in and watching another podcast right here in our studios from inside out i'm your host jay man uh i got a lot of stuff to talk about not just the topic for tonight but some major changes changes if you will going on right here with your host jay from inside out and uh i can't be more happy or ecstatic with the news that i want to share with you guys so let's go ahead and get into that real quick and then of course i'm going to jump into the all the st- uh, all the facts, if you will, when it comes to wrongful convictions and and all of that, and I think a lot of you guys again are going to be quite surprised with some of the data and information when it comes to that and what causes it in the first place. So this is going to be a very interesting podcast, ladies and gentlemen, and I want you guys to stick here and uh, you know and wait for me to complete this whole thing and then give me your guys' uh, opinions or comments. Uh, when this thing's all over because some of you are going to be quite shocked just like I had when I did the research on this so let's go ahead and get into it real quick but before I do let me go ahead and go up here real quick and show you the changes here on my channel now here it, now guys keep in mind if you are new here and you're not subbed sub to this channel right here as you guys can see all right and that's me this is the uh, channel name but I want you guys to see something's changed look right here I am now monetized on my channel as you guys can see and I want all of you to become your first member on my channel so what you got to do is you got to hit the join button and then go through the steps to becoming a actual real member not just a subscriber but also you can join and get extra perks extra you know things for this channel than you can normally uh, so the membership's right there. You can hit the join button. Uh, we, we are doing big things on this channel, and uh, I couldn't thank you all enough for making this a possibility. Man, this is just absolutely stunning, amazing, and epic, and so many other positive words you can think. So uh, please consider looking at joining this channel and uh, getting extra perks and other options that you don't have normally just being on the channel itself. Uh, and of course you got options you got three different options and three different price tags of what you can do to uh, join and be a member so pick one and check it out you won't be disappointed all right so as you guys can see uh, I've done quite a bit of uh, work on this channel and I've gotten a lot of views on a lot of these videos here look 504 views 18k views uh, you know so uh, things are looking good on my channel ladies and gentlemen and again uh it's only going to get better from here uh so i'm definitely monetized and now ladies and gentlemen things are going to be uh completely different if you will to a certain extent on this channel and again i can't thank you all enough for the major change that you've given me or us i should say on this channel so thank you very much guys all right so again if you're new here please hit the sub like comment share and uh you know uh put myself out there more so other people can get educated on these very important podcasts that i do all right for tonight's podcast as you guys remember uh at the the description portion of this video i'm going to be talking about the wrongful conviction and all the data and research to go along with this and a lot of you guys are going to be quite surprised so let's go ahead and get into that right now I'm getting this information, data, and other, uh, uh, you know, facts, if you will, from Western Michigan University. Uh, I highly suggest you go over there and check them out if you're not uh, familiar with them. Uh, but anyways, they, they put a great piece of information up on their page here, which is what I'm going to be showing you guys here. And I think a lot of you guys are going to get shocked and surprised on some of this information. All right. So the here's the topic and i'm going to go ahead and go to my full screen now you will not be seeing me anymore uh, but you still can hear me so let's go ahead and do this right now and get into the details 
Causes of wrongful conviction. All right. Check this out. The resources of the justice system are often stacked against poor defendants, which is I'm one of them. All right. So even though, look, I hate to use, I hate to even read the word poor because it technically this is a lot of their issues why wrongful convictions happen. I'm going to show you all that here in just a minute, but this is the reason why I think this needs to be changed. I think it's unfair, unjust, and not right for poor people to get screwed over, but the rich don't. The ones that can afford the, the very high expensive attorneys get their cases beat or thrown out or something positive. Why the poor people get screwed over by this system. So I don't like this word poor. I think every individual that's locked up in our criminal justice system, ladies and gentlemen, should have fair, uh, fair treatment when it comes to uh, attorneys. So maybe we can uh, change that perspective too. Uh, but anyways, matters only become worse when a person is represented by, a, by an ineffective Hmm, how interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Infective, meaning attorney doesn't know what he's doing, can't do his job. Incompetent, another word, or overburdened defense lawyer. Absolutely, and it happens daily, ladies and gentlemen, day in and day out, week after week, every single day. Uh, attorneys do not work to get you off your case because it's all about the good almighty dollar, ladies and gentlemen. The failure of overworked lawyers to investigate, call witnesses, or prepare for trial has led to the uh, conviction of innocent people. Absolutely. It happens every day. Every day. Shrinking funding and access to resources for public defenders and court-appointed attorneys is only making the problem worse. Absolutely. I 100% agree. And that right there in this whole entire paragraph, ladies and gentlemen, this whole entire thing right here, needs to be reformed. Absolutely. Moving on. Mistaken witnesses ID is another factor of why we get wrongful convictions. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot of data here to di try to digest, so bear with me. Eyewitness error is the single greatest, single greatest, single greatest cause of wrongful convictions. Imagine that. Okay, uh, and it's, uh, it's nation nationwide, playing a role in 72% of convictions overturned through DNA testing, and that's just one factor. Thank God for DNA, huh? Imagine, imagine before DNA was even, you know, uh, invented or, or used. Imagine the, 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 the rate back then before DNA was even invented. Yeah. Holy crap, people. While, I, while eyewitness testimony can be uh, evidence before a judge and jury, 30 years of strong social science research has proven, again, <clears throat> proven, show, social science, I love science. I got mad respect for science. Okay? Okay. That eyewitness identification is often unreliable, and I don't know if I, uh, I don't know if I buy that because sometimes eyewitnesses can be key for a case, so that could be you know up and down for me on that one. But nonetheless, moving on, research shows that the human mind is not like a tape recorder, which I get. That's why we have cameras today. We neither record events exactly as we see them, nor recall them like a tape that has been rewound. Instead, witness memory is like any other evidence at a crime scene. It must be preserved carefully and re retrieved, um, and I'm sorry for the words, guys, methodically, or it can be contaminated. So that's a, that's a mouthful and a lot right there to try to take in the reason why we have wrongful convictions. And I'm not even, I, I, just be, I just started. In case after case, DNA has proven what scientists already know, that eyewitness identification is frequently inaccurate. Imagine that. 
It's what happened with my case. I shouldn't be a felon today. All due to eyewitness inaccuracy. The person I supposedly robbed couldn't even ID me in a photo lineup. The case should be thrown out, right? No. More on that later. This is why I do what I do, and this is why I hate the system. False confection, confessions. Imagine that. Uh, looks like my, bear with me, ladies and gentlemen, my, uh, my locked up loved ones calling me. Bear with me, guys. I, this was unexpected. It will be recorded and may be monitored. If you believe this should be a private call, please hang up and follow facility instructions to register this number as a private number. To accept this free call, press 1. To refuse the thank you for using, secure it. You may start the conversation now. Hey, welcome to the show, Jay Lee. I'm actually doing a podcast right now on our topic, wrongful convictions. And I'm actually glad you're here. Maybe you can uh, touch some touch uh, base on this topic for tonight. Anyways, how are you doing, Jay Lee? And welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me, Jay. Appreciate being here. Uh, definitely an interesting topic to discuss, and I can't wait to get to it. Yeah, and I appreciate you tuning in because uh, obviously you probably, in there where you're at currently, have probably seen a buttload of wrongful convictions. Your take on that real quick. Yeah, um, well, if you stick, uh, stand by, sis, I'm going to read some other information. I'm going to read this off, and I want your take on it real quick, and I'm going to move on to the next portion of this uh, podcast. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> so, ladies and gentlemen, including you, Jay Lee, check this out. It says false confection, uh, confessions, and we all know what that is, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot of that, which causes, again, wrongful convictions. And again, it says this, in about 30%, now 30% may seem low to a lot of you guys, but that's not, in, in a situation like that, that's pretty freaking hot. So uh, just bear with me and understand what I'm getting at here, folks. In about 30% of DNA exoneration cases, innocent defendants made incriminating statements. Imagine that. Delivered outright confessions or pled guilty. These cases show that confess confessions are not always prompt by internal knowledge or actual guilt, but are sometimes motivated by external influences. Your take on that, Jaylee? Yeah, well, my take on the external influences is probably because the law enforcement agency that's involved has a certain quota of a conviction rate that they're trying to reach. Uh, because, as, as you know, behind the scenes, there are a lot of competitions between police agencies and from one prosecutor to another. It's all about statistics, how many convictions they can get in order to advance their career. And unfortunately, what that does is it causes hasty judgment and the drive or the need to coerce confessions that are then called what we call false confessions due to manipulation and coercion. Uh, otherwise, if that wasn't there, they would not have had those confessions. And of course, that's just one branch of a large tree. Right, no, absolutely. And of course, you know, um, I'm reading down a list basically, uh, Jay Lee, of the, the, the major amount of lists. And again, to uh, let you know where this is all coming from, this is actually coming, and I don't know if you might be shocked or surprised, but I thought it was very interesting when I saw this earlier before I did this podcast. This is coming from the um, Mi uh, Western Michigan University. Imagine that. Yeah, yeah, well, that's just that's one of the phenomenal universities that's been visited. And, of course, there are other INSIS projects that study it and uh, produce their own data as well. Right. 
And like I said, there's a laundry list of what causes wrongful convictions, which all of these things I'm reading off, ladies and gentlemen, need to be reformed and fixed. So this kind of data and information does not show up here anymore. This is getting ridiculous. And this is, again, this is a laundry list, ladies and gentlemen, of what causes this in the first place. Almost, almost a point where it's almost lazy work. Lazy, lazy investigations. And, and what I'm reading off to you guys, too, is the reason why I'm a felon today. Imagine that. This was due to poor, poor investigation on my case. Wouldn't you agree, Jay Lee? Yeah, what happened with you and, and with others is, is a travesty of justice. You actually had evidence that could have tended to show your innocence, and your lawyer and the investigators didn't really give a damn. Um, you know, because obviously there's a lot of stigma that's uh, surrounding uh, a lot of negative attention and dark energy surrounding uh, certain types of allegations. And, uh, you know, you could be the most innocent person in the world get accused of the most heinous case and your lawyer drop the ball and not even do anything to defend you. Well, I was outnumbered too, sis. I was completely outnumbered and I didn't have anybody to back my back. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because we talked about like your phone records and stuff like that. They could have proved that, um, you know, you were not in an area that they said yeah. that you were in. But yeah. uh, I digress. Um, the issue of wrongful convictions. I remember an old quote or an old saying <clears throat> from, and, you know, an old time, an old time person. I can't remember the name now, but the quote started with something like this: "I would rather let a thousand guilty people go free than to stand idle and do nothing when I am aware of there's one innocent person locked up." Yeah. Amen, sis. Absolutely, amen. All right, so moving on to the list, ladies and gentlemen, the next one I'm going to read to you guys. And I hope this is shocking information. And then, of course, get this out. Share it. Let somebody else get educated on wrongful convictions because this, this area or uh, um, wrongful conviction section, if you will, if I call it a section, needs to be reformed, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. Now, look, here's the next thing down the list. False forensic evidence. Imagine that. False forensic evidence. Check this out. Since the late 1980s, DNA, which I absolutely respect and love today, because imagine what it was like back in the day when DNA wasn't there. Holy crap. Now that we got it, there have been, ladies and gentlemen, cases reopened, looked at, either found guilty, guilty or not guilty. So it's, like, it's kind of a plus thing for me when it comes to DNA. Moving on. Since the late 1980s, DNA analysis has helped identify the guilty and exonerate the innocent nationwide. Just what I said, absolutely. While DNA testing was developed through extensive scientific research, which again, ladies and gentlemen, I really respect science, and I hope you do too. Uh, without it, we'll be screwed. Anyways, at the top endemic centers, many other forensic techniques, such as hair, Bite marks, uh, comparisons, firearm, uh, tool mark analysis, and shoe print comparisons, just to name a few, ladies and gentlemen, are part of this now forensic evidence. And it says here, have never been subjected to rigorous scientific evaluation. Meanwhile, forensics techniques that have been properly validated, such as and I'm not sure how to pronounce that word, ladies and gentlemen. I do apologize. Some of these words are very difficult for me, but I want you guys, that's why I pull it up, so you can read it yourself. Read it yourself. I'm not lying or making stuff up here, guys, so there it is. All right? Read that word to yourself. Uh, you know, it's there. It is what it is. Um, so, and, of course, blood. There's blood. And, uh, you know, other things. So you guys can read what's going on there. So now, that is what causes uh, wrongful convictions. It's on the list. Here's another one. Perjury. Imagine that. Jay Lee, you know all too well, kind of to a certain extent, what perjury is all about. You want to touch base on that real quick? Yeah, so there's different degrees of perjury, but to me, the most basic definition, it is to know you're lying when you do it and masquerade your lie as truth, and then you get caught doing that, and yeah. you will essentially, could potentially uh, be charged with perjury, 
depending on the degree of what you get. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, here's some more information on that, which you, you hit the nail right on, you hit the hammer right on the nail. Anyways, um, it says here in, eight, in 18% of wrongful conviction cases overturned through DNA testing. <laughs> DNA testing, again, an informant testified against the defendant at the original trial. Often, statements from people with incentives to testify, particularly incentives that are not disclosed to the jury. Hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. Are the central evidence in convicting an innocent person? Your take, Jay Lee, on that. Yeah, uh, the one it boils down to is that the people allowing prosecutors to present evidence without telling the jury that the person testifying, for example, has a motive to possibly lie on the stand, and prosecutors, you know, winning the argument. Uh, essentially, the judge not allowing the incentive or the motive to lie to be presented to the jury. So the jury is never told that this person possibly could be a liar as he's testifying. And that's unfortunately what leads to a lot of wrongful convictions. <laughs> yeah, that's, and, and again, would, would you agree or disagree, sis, on this next statement I want to ask you? Would you think, because I already said it at the top, would you think, though, in a um, respectful note, that it's a lot of it's laziness? Uh, well, I, yeah, that's definitely some of it. Uh, you know, they, they do have a legitimate argument to say that it's overwhelmed. But I really do believe that the justice system is swamped and drowning in cases, yeah. but that still doesn't excuse prosecutors from violating their ethical rules or their moral standard of conduct. You know, prosecutors have wide latitude and discretion to make strategic decisions on what to charge and what not to charge or how to present a case before a jury. Yeah. But unfortunately, uh, fortunately, uh, all too often our judges used to be working in the same prosecutor's office and have a uh, ideology that's anti uh or anti-prisoner or anti-defendant. And with that kind of ideology, if the judge is not fair, the judge will slant his decision in favor of a prosecutor who is prosecuting a case and at the same time violating his own ethical rules. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, just with that statement right there, sis, it definitely needs a major overhaul. Uh, because, believe it or not, I read somewhere else, despite what I'm looking at here on my screen, I read someone else that wrongful convictions going up. It's already up to 70%. Yeah. Well, you hit on something very uh, close to home with me. Um, like in my case, I had my confession was coerced from me, uh, and, but then uh, nobody really argued or fought that, and uh, the time limit to argue that is, is somewhat over now. But, uh, you know, I, I would not have confessed to action. If it hasn't been out. Yeah. Wow. Um, man, this is some inf this is some strong information, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you share this. Get it out with somebody else that's going through the same thing. Moving down the list, official misconduct. You know too well about that, don't you, Jilly? Official misconduct. Yeah. Too often as well, unfortunately, especially in the correction. I, I see it all the time, and uh, that just, uh, it, it, it's ongoing, unfortunately, Jay, because, you know, if uh, an officer gets away with it the first time or a prosecutor gets away with it the first time, they're going to think they can continue to get away with it because they're never held accountable. Right. Reading on here, guys, official misconduct on the list of what causes wrongful convictions. Here it is. Some wrongful convictions are caused by honest mistakes. Ooh, honest. <laughs> I don't know how the system is honest. Anyways, honest mistakes, but in far too many cases. The very people who are responsible for uh, ensuing truth and justice, law enforcement officials and prosecutors, lose sight of these obligations and instead focus solely on securing convictions, just like my colleague and the owner and founder, Jay Lee, just mentioned. It's all about getting a point 
on under their belt. There it is. Proving the pudding. Not a statement. It's fact. Backed up by not only Jay Lee, but what you see on your screen. The case... The cases of wrongful convictions uncovered by DNA testing are filled with evidence of ne uh, negligence. Uh, sorry, guys, these words are hard for me. I apologize. Uh, fraud and mis misconduct by prosecutors or police departments. And I cannot stand police departments. I cannot stand them. I don't have a lot of love and respect for our police or prosecutors, judges, or lawyers. And that's just me. Moving on. While the majority of law enforcement officers and prosecutors are honest and trustworthy, which they are not, criminal justice is a human endeavor. And the possibility of neg uh, neglect, basically, misconduct and cor corruption exist, which I've been speaking on on numerous occasions, ladies and gentlemen. Even if one officer of every thousand is dishonest, wrongful convictions will continue to occur. Amen. DNA, uh, DNA have, ex have exposed official misconduct at every level and stage of criminal mis investigation. So if it wasn't for DNA, ladies and gentlemen, we'd be screwed. Your take, Jay Lee? Yeah, it, it's definitely under the subject of prosecutorial misconduct that these things happen. And if, uh, if your fans today will do a uh, search under stories under the title prosecutorial this conduct, you'll find story after story after story of prosecutors abusing their office, violating their ethical rules, and putting innocent people in prison, and in some unfortunate cases, putting them on death row. And in the most extremely foul cases, someone dies on death row and comes to find out they were innocent the whole time. Man, yeah, imagine that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be the uh, information on this page. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to follow or Check these guys out. There's their information right here. I'm going to highlight it for you guys. There it is. Department of Soci uh, so Social Sociology. I think that's, anyways, Western Michigan University. University. Kalamazoo, um, Michigan, 49008. There's their information. Check them out. You can follow them on Facebook, too, as well. Check them out and let them know Jay sent you. Uh, I'm going to go back after, I'm going to go back over here and I want to show you guys something else on my page real quick. Um, I got to find it now. Where did it go? Bear with me, guys. Uh, I was going to show you the, okay, right here. What is the number one cause of wrongful convictions in the U.S.? You'll be surprised. Check it out. Here it is. Eyewitness error. Jay Lee, eyewitness error. Sound familiar? Eyewitness error is the single greatest cause of wrongful conviction nationwide, playing a role in 72% of convictions overturned through DNA testing. Eyewitness error. Your take. Yeah, that sure hits both of all, don't it? And that's, that's really unfortunate, but that, that's the truth. And uh, nine times out of ten, what someone perceives to have witnessed is not exactly what happened. And, of course, between two different people witnessing the same thing, they're going to come up with two different variations of the same story. Yeah, absolutely. And real quick, one more piece of uh, evidence or information or data, however you want to look at it, ladies and gentlemen, it says right here on your, on your page that you're watching this on. According to the recent study of wrongful convictions, the number of people convicted of crimes who have been proved innocent has increased 70% in the last five years. Jaylee? Yeah, it reminds me of a story that was, uh, it got out of a lot of media attention. It was the West Memphis Three. You should look that up. Uh, West Memphis Three. Uh, three young men who were demonized and accused by prosecutors of doing a heinous thing to three young children. Come to find out, you know, uh, after they suffered years and years and years in prison and it took outside innocence projects and organizations to get them out and come to find out they weren't involved at all but their lives were ruined because the prosecutors in that city were more concerned about the conviction rate yeah imagine that wow holy crap uh and again ladies and gentlemen you can't make this shit up 
If you guys are new here and you guys love this type of information or you want to hear and see more of it and you just came across my channel by accident or whatever, please consider hitting a sub. But there's more you can do on my channel, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot more you can do. And I'm going to show you that right now. So uh, just bear with me for a second. Here's my channel, ladies and gentlemen. You guys can sub. That's free. But now you can also join. One minute left. And uh, you can call back, Jay Lee, real quick, or uh, uh, you can call back. I'm going to be, this is the tail end of my podcast anyways. If you want to call back, you can. If not, uh, call me back later, and we'll talk uh, more privately. All right. Thanks, Jay. I'll call you later. Thanks, everybody. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, Jay Lee, and have a great day. The caller has hung up. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're new here and you want to check out this uh, podcast uh, from a different perspective, you have the option now to hit the join button and become a member on my channel. And what that does to you guys, it'll give you more perks and more av availability and whatnot to do on my channel than you can just being a subscriber. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Hit the join button. You can hit 299 and get the standard level. You can get the epic level, which um, it's 699. This gives you, uh, you know, other options. And here are more options for 24.99 a month. You can do this uh, I'll show you these each one. So the standard level is 299. This is uh, you get badges, you get members only live chats, prior, priority reply to comments. Uh, this one is more. You get early access to new videos, member shout outs, photos and uh, status updates, exclusive members only videos, and members only live streams. And I think that's one. That's the best one out of all of these because it definitely will. Um, It'll definitely give you guys all the access to all this other stuff. And, of course, you know, the other option is this one, uh, connecting on social media and more options at $24.99 a month, which, you know, I don't know why they did it that way, but they did. Uh, but you guys have three options to pick, whatever, which one I would be highly uh, honored and uh, highly loved and respected if you pick one of these and uh, go from there and uh, that's how you can join my channel now ladies and gentlemen and become a member so hopefully uh, hopefully i will get to see new members and give shout outs to all of you that have joined my channel man we're doing big things over here ladies and gentlemen and it's just going to get better from here but uh I, I got a lot of um interesting things coming down the road when it comes to this uh podcast and i want you all to be a part of it so coming up in the next few days i'm going to be doing a live i have to put it together i gotta wait it's a lot of production behind the scenes that you guys don't realize, so it's a lot of work. But I'll be doing a live event on how jailhouse food, what it looks like, how it's made, commissary, all that fun jazz right here in my studio of all places. And I'm going to show you how they eat, what the food looks like, how bad and how unhealthy it really is. There's a lot of production behind the scenes on that, so I can't wait for you guys to you know, tune in for that. That's going to be interesting. I'm going to make, and here's, a, here's the, the, the best part, I guess you can call it. I'm going to be making a jailhouse burrito uh, from the commissary. So I want you guys to be part of that to show you how these guys eat in there and why their, their health is declining day in and day out. You don't want to miss that. Plus, I'll be doing a live event at one of my local um, food banks out here to donate that $100 gift card that was sold kindly in kindly given back to me from our last two uh, events that we had done live right here on this channel. So I don't want you guys to miss that. A lot of things coming down the road. I got people reaching out to me. People want to do podcasts and all that. So I hope this was, uh, you know, very educational for you guys on the wrongful convictions. Wrongful convictions, as you guys see, are caused by lack of doing uh, uh, investigations and so many other things. That's why we have it. And people say, oh, you're, and people say all the time, oh, there's not innocent people behind bars. Bull crap, or we wouldn't have this problem that you just read off here tonight. So that's going to cut it for this podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it. Anyways, I'm your host, Jay. I will see you all right here on our studio from Inside Out. Good night, everybody.